Hi there, this is James Tripp. This is Hypnosis Without Trance. This video I am producing in response to an inquiry that I've had by email. Let me just grab it up here on the iPad. It's about alpha states, alpha brainwave states. Um, the question is, perhaps you can talk about alpha brainwaves as it relates to hypnosis. Perhaps you could talk about your thoughts on how this relates to somnambulistic states and compare and contrast these concepts to your work, to my work. So this is interesting. It's interesting timing to get this question because this is an area that I'm quite interested in at the moment. I've recently grown uh, fascinated by because I can see a lot of useful applications for it. And it is an interesting thing to compare and contrast with the hypnosis without trance model. Because in hypnosis without trance, we're not about a specific altered state that you put somebody into and that altered state is hypnosis and that altered state somehow renders the person more open to suggestion. That isn't what hypnosis without trance is about. It's about a process model of hypnosis. It's about looking at how you use language and communication to direct attention and seed ideas for the purpose of leading somebody into an altered perception of reality. Now, with the hypnosis without trance approach, there's no question that states shift. It's not saying that states don't shift. It's just saying there isn't a specific signature state that is hypnosis that renders people open to suggestion. But yes, of course, if we're altering somebody's perception of reality, if their perception is shifting, their state is shifting. So we are definitely you know, shifting states with hypnosis without trance. But the question here is about alpha brainwave states particularly. Now, I'm no expert on this kind of thing, and normally I wouldn't put a video out unless I was really clear on my position with it, and I'm not clear on my position with this. But let me just fill you guys in who maybe don't know what uh, I'm talking about or what we're talking about when we're talking about alpha states. We're talking about brain waves. We're talking about the frequency of brain waves, and they are generally classically put into four sort of areas, bandwidths. Now, right at the top, we've got the beta brain waves, and this is very fast brain wave activity, very fast, very frantic. Below that, it drops to alpha, so the brain waves slow down. Then below that, it drops to theta, and they slow down even more. Um, and right at the bottom, we've got, uh, we've got delta, okay, which is very, very slow. This is when you're in deep sleep. So, when you're very, very alert, very kind of focused in a, in a wired kind of a way, you're going to be in beta state. And this is how we spend a lot of our life because it's a very kind of stressful place. We're very reactive when our brain is, is pumping along at, at a beta level. And our uh, sympathetic nervous system, our fight flight system is, is often fired up as well. So it's very much a stressful place to be in. And it's when we are in a reactive mode, in an emergency, in a firefighting mode. Thing is, modern life just generally puts us in this state and it can be problematic for us. Now the alpha state that drops below the brainwave pattern slow down. And this is a, a state, a uh, brainwave signature that's more associated with a relaxed but still alert kind of way of paying attention, a way of being in the world, a way of uh, using your brain. It's a different state of mind, and some people have drawn a correlation between this state of mind and what people might call trance in hypnosis. So the suggestion is the old school hypnosis processes put people into trance, or another way of thinking about it is they put them into an alpha state and then when they're in that alpha state, they're somehow responsive in a different way. And maybe this explains why they respond to suggestions in certain ways. And this is one model. And I think to a degree, there is some truth. That model points to some truth, but I think it's an oversimplification. Uh, and I don't think we can draw this, this conclusion all out. And I think there's still problems with the old trance model, even though, I will say right now, from what I'm understanding at the moment, there is immense, immense therapeutic and transformative value in moving people into alpha states and starting to get them so as they can access those states more regularly in life and start to live their life more through those states rather than being habitually in beta states, habitually in stressed out reactive ways of being. 
So I think this idea of looking at alpha states can be a really useful thing when it comes to looking at the therapeutic benefits of hypnosis and especially kind of classic forms of hypnosis and starting to make sense of how they can facilitate not only improvements in people's health in physiological conditions but also improve and increase and enhance people's abilities to change their behaviors as well and I'm going to talk about this a little bit here so I want to credit right now, at the moment, a big impact on me is the work of Dr. Les Femi, who is the head of neurofeedback at Princeton University. Now, Les Femi has spent a number of years, many, many years now, putting um, people into various brain machines, ECG machines, fMRI machines, this kind of thing, and running them through different processes. And he's not thinking about hypnosis. He's just interested in shifting the way people pay attention. Now this is a key thing in, in Dr. Femi's work, is he's interested in how people pay attention. And his research has shown that when people shift how they pay attention, their, their brain waves shift. So they tend to drop from, and, and our habitual way of paying attention, let me just say this, is with what Dr. Femi calls a narrow objective focus. So his hypothesis is the way we live, culturally we are indoctrinated into paying attention in a particular way, habitually, and this way of paying attention keeps us in a stressed out reactive kind of state, keeps us in a lot of, uh, in a lot of delta orientated brainwave activity. And this has a massive detrimental impact on our health and well-being across the board. Uh, and there's a number of interesting observations that he makes. When we're in this delta state, when we're in this stressed out, wired up state, number one, the, the blood flow shifts in our brain. So we have a, a reduced blood flow to the prefrontal cortex, the modern brain, uh, the part of our brain that does creative, integrative, holistic, connective thinking. The part of our brain that is the seat of our creativity and imagination. This front part of our brain, the blood flow reduces when we're in a delta state, when we're in our everyday kind of reactive way of being. So we lose an ability to, which changes the way that we're using our brain. And there's an increased blood flow to the older parts of the brain, the more reactive parts of the brain. So that makes sense because we want to be working reactively, um, problem solving, firefighting, dealing with difficult situations. That's one way of being, it's useful, it has its role, but if we want to think creatively and integratively, the kinds of ways that your brain needs to work in order to start transforming your way of being in the world, well, the way we habitually pay attention is going to keep us out of this. Now, it's an interesting thing that if we can look at any processes, if we can look at how we can use hypnosis, the use of language and communication to direct attention Remember that part of the hypnosis without trance definition. If we can change the way people are paying attention, and this is the observation that Les Femi is making, Dr. Femi is making, when people change the way they pay attention, it changes their brain waves, it changes the way their brain is working, and it changes the way their body is working. Because there's a secondary thing. When people shift into alpha states, into um, alpha brainwave organized uh, ways of paying attention, their focus opens up. Instead of being a narrow objective focus, focusing on one or two things and bringing them into the foreground and excluding everything else and kind of wrapping tightly the attention around that, we open up and we see the bigger picture. Literally, we see the bigger picture. We take in more information. And when our brain is working like this, it shifts our physiology. It allows our parasympathetic nervous system to come into ascendancy. Now, the interesting thing about this is our parasympathetic nervous system is what needs to be an ascendancy for us to heal ourselves, to do the repair work, the general cellular repair work. Also, the part that needs to be an ascendancy to grow new neuronal connections. Now think about this in terms of behavior change. Think about this in terms of people who want to change their attitudes, their outlooks, their perspectives, their behaviors in life. If they're constantly in a state of being in the world, if they're constantly in narrow objective focus, if they're constantly in uh, beta states up at the top and it's firing away, when are they going to be, number one, having the opportunity to utilize their prefrontal cortex, the really powerful part of their brain, the human part, the bit that enables us to be such creative thinkers and transformers, 
they're not going to be in a place where they can really utilize that firstly secondly they're not going to be in a place that even if they were able to utilize it and start shifting things about they're not really in a place to kind of hardwire that in for the for the new axons and dendrites and new neuronal connections to grow because the sympathetic nervous system is keeping them flight fight flight mode and not allowing the kind of healing and generative work to be done within the system that enables change. So this is a really powerful thing when you're looking at change work and you're looking at health and you're looking at how hypnosis can be utilized in that context using language and communication to direct attention and seed ideas. Dr. Femi's work is all about shifting attention and how when you shift attention it shifts state and how when you shift state it opens up new ways of processing, new ways of, um, or and opens up the body's potential to, uh, to repair and grow generatively. This is really, really important, I think. Um, and this is documented stuff, by the way. This, is, uh, this work has been done across many, many years with, with the results being measured, the impact that this is having on people's lives, changing the way they pay attention. Now, Les Femi, Dr. Femi is not a hypnotist. That's not what he does. When you listen to his processes and they sound very hypnotic, and his work's very useful, I think, for hypnotists to understand one way in which the work that you can do um, that you do can be highly impactful for people. But here's the question. Does that mean that's what's going on with hypnosis? Does that mean in order for hypnotic phenomena to happen, people have to shift into this kind of alpha state uh, and have the, the, the kind of alpha synchrony going in uh, on within the mind? Now, my honest answer to that is I don't know. I just don't know. It would be fascinating to find out. There's a good chance that the answer is yes. There's a good chance that um, synchronous alpha within the, the brain, across the brain, could be a signature pattern that you would find in place with many hypnotic phenomena. It could be there and it would make sense. If you think about the hypnosis without trance hypnotic loop, we've got beliefs, imagination, physiology and experience. Okay, so we want to shift attention and we want to shift the mind in ways that fire up the imagination because what is imagined impacts on what is it experienced it makes it creates the shift in physiology and the shift in experience so that imagination element is key and where do we do our imagining well, we do it with our big prefrontal cortex this is where it's going on that part of the brain that as Les Femi points out has a increased blood flow when we are in synchronous alpha so if we are using our brain in a connective imaginative way then that certainly could be a key element. I don't know necessarily. I suspect some phenomena, particularly amnesia phenomena and that kind of thing, may work in different ways. Because oftentimes when people do name amnesias, what they're really doing is inducing confusion rather than amnesia. And I would suspect that that phenomena may have more in common um, with, uh, with the beta states, the more kind of higher mm, stressed out. So I don't think there's necessarily a correlation, but there possibly often is. Now, let's just say for a moment, let's just, now there might be some people watching this and saying, ah, James, so you're admitting it, you do have to put people into trance in order to do hypnosis. Our hypnosis is trance. No, I'm not saying that. Because what that would be saying is that in order for somebody to respond to suggestions, they would need to be in a particular state of mind. I am not saying this is the case. I am disagreeing. If that were the case, you wouldn't be able to do hypnosis unless they were already in that state of mind because they wouldn't be able to follow your suggestions, they wouldn't be able to respond to your suggestions in order to move them into the appropriate state of mind in the first place. So the picture is not that simple. Even if it does turn out that um, this kind of shift in the brain is a phenomenally useful thing in having people shift their reality, it doesn't say that hypnosis is that kind of shift in reality. We are experiencing our reality all the time and that experience is mediated and modulated and uh, attenuated by our brain and how our brain is functioning regardless of the state that it is in. 
So if you move to a process model of hypnosis, what you are doing is being able to influence that state in many different ways, not saying it has to be in a particular state in order for, for hypnosis to happen. So here's the question, somnambulists, classic somnambulists, are they somehow more in this alpha state? I don't know is the answer. Um, it may be the case. Does it render them more open to suggestion by being in that state? I don't know. Again, maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. That would be something that would be very interesting to do some research around. And if anybody is watching this who knows of, because I'm not a particular big research junkie, I'm, a, I'm not a scientist, I'm an artist when it comes to hypnosis. So I just, I go out there, I experiment, do stuff in the real world. But if somebody knows of a piece of research that, uh, that would be informative in this area, I'd love to hear about it. So, remember this, I recommend checking out Les Femi's book, The Open Focus Brain. If you're a hypnotist and you do transformative work with people or healing work with people or whatever, you are looking to use hypnosis to help people make positive shifts in your life. I think that that book has a lot to offer in making sense of simple ways that you can use your skills uh, to create high impact differences with people. A lot of people get hung up going, well, I don't know what to do with hypnosis and all of that. Read that book. You don't have to do a lot to start making a difference for people, a significant, impactful difference for people. That is something that's worth knowing. So check out the book, The Open Focus Brain by Les Femi, and read it, digest it, and you'll be able to start forming your own opinions. I hope this video has been useful. Until the next time we speak, take very good care of yourself.